Hello and welcome to lesson um, on Catechumenate number four, the Sacrament of Confirmation. Let's begin, begin with prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your sacraments, all your seven sacraments, uh, especially your three sacraments of initiation, which help us to, which lead us into the Christian life. We ask you to help us understand, especially the sacrament of confirmation this day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, the sacrament of confirmation, in our normal way, um, which would be being baptized as a baby, receiving First Holy Communion as a child, then being confirmed as a teenager. The sacrament of confirmation, ideally, in our diocese, is begun, the preparation for it is begun when we're a freshman in high school, and at the end of our sophomore year, that's when we're confirmed, and that we would be confirmed by the bishop or a representative of his. If you are receiving both, all three, baptism, first communion, and confirmation, if you haven't been baptized before, then the order is baptism, confirmation, first communion. And um, that way, uh, the Mass, that's kind of uh, normal, that we celebrate sacraments first, and then we go into the Liturgy of the Eucharist, and we receive Holy Communion. So, um, I'm not exactly sure exactly why the order is switched for people that are baptized as babies versus people that are baptized as adults, or people after having received the Age of Reason, but those are the two um, ways. The Sacrament of Confirmation kind of jumps it's either before Holy Communion or it's after Holy Communion, depending on whether you, you were baptized as a child, as a baby, or baptized after the age of reason, which is the age of seven. So just a quick hint to you who might be parents one day, or having children now, that if you wait past the age of seven to baptize your child, then your child is kind of get, kind of have uh, less of a formation experience because they're going to be in catechism for two years, and they're, they're going to, we're going to see, receive all three sacraments, baptism, first communion, and confirmation. And that's kind of less of uh, opportunity to uh, teach them about the faith. Whereas if you baptize them before seven years old, then they will get to go into catechism class for two years and receive first communion, and then later as teenagers go back to catechism class for another two years and receive confirmation. Now the story for confirmation, like where do we find this in the Bible? The story is the story of the coming of the Holy Spirit, which we call Pentecost. And we believe this happened 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. So after Jesus ministered for one to three years and then was crucified, he rose from the dead after three days, and then he lived with us for 50 days after that. He ascended into heaven, and on the 50th day, the Holy Spirit came down and rested on the apostles, uh, the disciples, confirming them. And they went out and they preached. Now before they received this Pentecost Holy Spirit experience 50 days after the resurrection, they were frightened and afraid. They didn't know what to do. Uh, they were kind of locking themselves up um, in a room and um, they were kind of hiding away from the world. Uh, Jesus was appearing to them here and there. I mean, we do hear that they were walking on journeys, but they were hiding um, in a way, not, and, not, and unsure of what the future was gonna be like. Their, their Lord had been taken, he had been crucified. And um, <clears throat> they didn't have this gift uh, yet of being like courageous and um, knowing what God wanted from them. They were just kind of like, they didn't have the help of the Holy Spirit to guide them in their life, in their ministry, as Christian people. And that's what was being given to them on the day of Pentecost. Fifty days after the resurrection, they're in the room, hiding, afraid, not knowing what to do. And the Holy Spirit came down as tongues of fire and rested on their heads. And after they received that gift of the Holy Spirit, they were confirmed they were confirmed, they walked out of that room and they started preaching. The fear was gone. The confusion of and not knowing, the ignorance of not knowing what to do was gone. 
they took the first step and they started to share the gospel to all people. And that day, 5,000 people or more, maybe it says 500,000, I can't remember, but there's a great number uh, of people converted that day. When they spoke, everyone heard them in their own language. It was a gift of the Holy Spirit for that day. And it was also a sign that what the future would be like for the church. Today, she speaks in all languages. Um, when she proclaims and the Pope from Rome speaks and reads and, and, and writes, it's translated into all these languages and the messages are spread throughout the world of God and, um, and what, what he wants from us. And so it was a sign that day that, and it happened miraculously that day. And today it happens more spiritually through us, naturally mixed with our love and our devotion and our faith. It happens more naturally through us and less miraculously, but it's a, it was a sign and it's being fulfilled every day now in our, in our day and age. So the sacrament of confirmation is something that helps us be witnesses, as the book says. It helps us give testimony. It helps us be evangelizers. It helps us in our ministry of living as disciples that share the gospel. So you can think of it as um, baptism and first communion. These are sacraments where we receive and we receive and we receive. And the focus of those sacraments is to receive. The focus of the sacrament we received the temple, we become temples of the Holy Spirit, receive the Holy Spirit, and with First Communion, we receive Jesus Himself. So we have the Holy Spirit and we have Jesus. <clears throat> what are we going to do with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus? We're going to share, I'm going to try to encourage, uh, influence, inspire people to embrace our God and His way of life as well, along with eternal salvation. What sacrament will help me share these, thing, these gifts that I've received? The sacrament of confirmation. It's like a sacrament that you receive something in order to share the other things that you've already received, to be witnesses in the world, and to be helpers of our Lord Jesus. So there's some other interesting facts. One of the things I think is that confirmation is necessary for the completion of baptismal grace. And so you say, well, I'm baptized, I'm good. But for it to become complete and full, then we need to complete it with the Sacrament of Confirmation. So it's wonderful that you're in the program because all of you who are watching this video now, who complete the class, will receive confirmation. It's not a separate class, it's this one. Whatever you're missing, any of the three sacraments, you're gonna receive all of those. Plus, um, you can learn also and experience the Sacrament of Confession. Uh, the sacrament is celebrated normally by the bishop. Um, if you're being baptized, then it's supposed to be celebrated by the minister who's doing the baptism. And um, the first part of it is a laying on of hands, which would be uh, putting hands on the crown of your head, um, praying silently for a while like that. And then also with uh, chrism oil. This is, uh, there's three kinds of oils in the church, and this is the highest and sweetest smelling oil that we have. This is the oil that's used for the ordination of priests. It's used also when babies are baptized and it's used uh, for adults um, or anyone who's being confirmed. So after the laying on of hands, uh, the bishop or the minister will come to you and make the sign of the cross with his thumb on your forehead. Um, some priests go a little bit over and they start pouring it on your head but as far as I know, the actual ritual is to make the sign of the cross with oil on your forehead. Now, as we said, that this will give you even more grace, and the grace will help you share the gospel and lead, hopefully lead others to Christ. And the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, which uh, were mentioned in your book, are wisdom, be growing in wisdom, You'll be growing in understanding. Um, you'll be growing in right judgment, or counsel. You'll be growing in courage, fortitude. Growing in knowledge. Growing in reverence and piety. 
and growing in wonder and awe of the Lord, or fear of the Lord. You'll be growing and uh, being someone that people can trust and rely on to help lead them to Christ. Now, as we said that um, it helps you be a better witness and to help others receive what you have received, this helps you be a better husband or wife because your role as a husband or wife is to share love, to offer love to your husband or wife. And what love is best? It's God's love. And so that's what you're called to do as a minister is, and this kind of unlocks and improves your ability. The love that you share, God's own love that you have received will be better shared with your husband and wife with more wisdom, with more understanding, uh, with better judgment, um, with more courage, as well as with your children. How can you be the best mom or dad? It's to be confirmed and to have this uh, grace to be able to share what you have received. You have received love and attention um, and care and compassion from our God, and you now can share that. You have a sacrament to share what you've received with your children, that, that care and attention and that love and compassion. And um, with your friends, with your mom and your dad, with your brothers and sisters, uh, with people at work, the sacrament of confirmation will help you be a better um, example or image of God in the world. So thank you for listening to this shorter lesson. Um, and the next lesson that we'll be uh, talking about is the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. May, may Almighty God be with you this day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What is Confirmation? Confirmation is the sacrament that completes baptism. In Confirmation, we are strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Hang on. Didn't we already receive the Holy Spirit in baptism together with sanctifying grace? That's right. In baptism, we are sanctified through sanctifying grace. Our soul becomes a dwelling place for God. And it's especially the Holy Spirit who takes up His abode in the soul. Through the Holy Spirit, we are taken up into the life of the Trinity, and He accompanies our actions with His power. So, why do we need the Holy Spirit again in confirmation? Well, it's like in the Gospels, where the Holy Spirit is given to the apostles not once, but twice. The first time after Jesus' resurrection, and then again at Pentecost. After his resurrection, Jesus breathes on the disciples and says, Receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like a breath of life, sanctifying the disciples and opening to them the understanding of Scripture. The Holy Spirit teaches and guides them, but they still keep to themselves. They pray and live in hiding while their faith grows. At Pentecost, all this changes. The Holy Spirit comes as a roaring wind and as tongues of fire, and the disciples begin to proclaim the faith openly, with power and courage. This is similar to what happens at baptism and confirmation. In baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit. We are sanctified by Him and begin to share in a new life. In confirmation, the Holy Spirit strengthens us so that we have the courage to carry this gift out into the world. When we have received confirmation, we are called to proclaim our faith courageously and to win people for Christ, like the apostles. Confirmation, then, is a strengthening to be a soldier in the kingdom of God, not just a citizen. We are called to stand fearless and firm, even in the face of opposition. By the power of confirmation, we are able to preserve, proclaim, and defend the faith.